Welcome to Wide Net Gaming. Today, looking at the survival mode. It doesn't have one, if, but if you can make one out of the sandbox mode in Drake Hollow. The game has been out for well over a year, and just to let you know, so you don't have to listen to a 52-minute video if you just want to know how the survival mode is, it's not like other roguelite or survival modes where you have that tension that if you don't do this, you die, and then it's over. All of that, hours of work, you're done. In Drake Hollow, you can always rebuild. It's more work, and the enemies get more difficult, but you can always rebuild your base, and that huge difficulty spike doesn't really come until later. So what I did is I did sandbox mode, switched it to Iron Man. You can do this in the campaign as well, switch the difficulty type. Only thing that I didn't have, which doesn't make it iron mode, is if I die, I can still go to my body, I can respawn there, or I can respawn at my base, and then my weapons take a little bit of damage. It's really how the game is designed. It's not meant to be that you die and then that's it, because you have this base that you're building, and then like that gets attacked at the same time. And part of, part of it is, um, even if you do switch it on, you can go back to an earlier save. Whereas like other games, like Kingdom, New, New Lands, or Two Crowns, if you die, it auto-saves, and then it deletes the game that you have. So that's how I set it up. I did the majority of it through single player, but then I had my daughter pop in here and there just to test out the co-op uh, to see how well it, r it ran. I didn't test that in my original review, and then also if that affects the game at all. So how it works is you go through the seasons, except you collect sigils. There's no, um, there's no like campaign element to this, and you get sigils by like clearing islands, defending against raids, uh, some of the spawn thorny bush thingies, or spots where enemies spawn. You take those out. Sometimes you get some from there as well. And like the campaign, you start out with nothing. You kind of you're like a little ways off from your base. You get your two drakes in the beginning that you're able to revive, and some schematics too, similar to the main campaign. Difference though with the Iron Man mode presets is you only have drakes in that first spring season. Once you go on to summer, none. You don't have any drakes that are going to be respawning. So you got to make use of the ones you have and then also deciding if you want to have those extra four after your two starting drakes. Sometimes uh, people just stick with the two, then they can manage their base more easily because you are going to have some resource issues early on. You got to really think about this. And this is why it it's not just uh, the survival mode in terms of, oh, you die, then that's it, and then I got to get good. It's also the resource management that you have going on. You got to decide to build a couple of those cauldrons to fill them up with like the berries because that will bump things up. And then at the same time, like, well, do I want those extra drakes later or do I ever get them? And then like how many beds do I have? Like certain like the, the regular beds you might not want early on because that takes up a part of the room for your base that you might want to use for resources, like the, the cauldron. And then even upgrading, too. Um, your drakes take more resources when they're upgraded, then you run to issues there as well. But the exploration, even playing by yourself, not didn't have much of an issue in the first world. It starts off very, very easy. Just you're getting less resources by like the toilets that you smash or the house that you have close to your base that you're exploring. For right now, all I have is the consumable beds, so I'm using that. Before I get too far into the video, even though it's not like other survival or roguelite games where you make a mistake and then you lose or everybody loses, this is still a fun one if you're playing with a group. And I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, like couples playing, someone with their spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, also kids. This is a, an excellent game to play. It's not uh, like the age rating isn't too high. And also the gameplay mechanics, if they're used to third person type 
of games. It's very simple to collect resources and then dump them off and then also building your base even. You can kind of build what you want and then if there's a mistake then you can always just deconstruct it and add something else later. And along with that there's different parts to it that it's all going on at the same time. So you have to, when you're building your base, that's going on. There's stuff going on there where you have to visit your drakes or you're going out exploring building waypoints, collecting resources, going together. You can do that easily. You can teleport back and forth. It's a lot of the, the gameplay elements and uh, those different genres all working at the same time. Make, make this a fun one to be playing with uh, really anyone as a kind of a pseudo casual experience, but you can uh, kind of take turns exploring or building your own base. The Iron Man mode, if you are, I recommend throwing that in completely where you can't revive if you're playing with two people, but especially three or more, because it gives that extra tension that you really need. It gets a bit too easy because you can go out and explore everything. I played this by myself and I didn't have too much trouble exploring most of the lands. Like I had to leave a little bit early, I mean, more for the sake of the video, but especially I can see if you're playing with a group of more, even though it's more rewarding, more fun, because you're all doing something at the same time, that can get too easy. And that can give the tension of if someone like gets down somewhere and they're far off on an island, you have to decide maybe the whole group goes out together at the same time you're picking up resources and exploring. Gives, gives a little more dimension to it that way. With the entirety of this video, these are all the clips, the highlights here, starting with Spring. Early on, um, not too difficult with the raids. It's more an issue of having to jump back all the time when a raid comes, but the resources not so much since it is um, on scarce for resources, I, um, I often find that I, I can explore multiple islands. It's just a matter of me having to jump back. But even in the first island, I did get downed. And uh, here's an example of why I wouldn't put Iron Man boat on. I, I'd be restarting my game. And I'd be, get, I'd be, I'd be uh, more careful, would maybe get better at it. But it's not really about that because you can just get unlucky. And, and it's kind of uh, like a, a cheesy way to to end your game but early on what I did was I would run back and revive my character um, one flaw with one flaw with this is you can just jump back to your base drop your weapons that take a little bit more damage when you do that and then the drakes just fix them and that's no issue and you have all your items and everything else so there is an issue there the problem though is your save doesn't get deleted like in kingdom new land so it doesn't penalize you. You can just go back to a previous save, take, kind of taking away the point of it. But you play with other people, then it is worth doing. Here I'm getting my third drake. You're going to have a lot of them that you don't like. There's a lot of the uh, more useless drakes, like wood cutting. I got one of those, but I was able to bump up my camp budget. Whether it's a good thing or not, it's probably not a good idea at the, the time that I did it. But here I got another one, the vampire, vampiric or which this one is good. You can attack and then get some health back so you're not rely, uh, just relying on heal salves, which I had a problem with in, in my run, getting enough of, I didn't get the Yarrow. So later on in the game. Here's my next Drake, Ether Resistant, another useless one along with uh, the Woodcutter. Sometimes you'll find that you're using them, but Another bonus with if you're playing in multiplayer that I found a lot, a lot of times while I'm playing like, oh, I wish there was another like two people here, someone managing the base, building things or using even just using the other drakes too. like it can be more useful if you're not in combat. You can use the resource bonus just to get a, to get extra stuff. But I am still getting the gifts here. I here I teleported back to get to my base. Other issue is getting the charms. You get the charms from the, the drakes and someone can be constantly doing this. It does get easier though. Once your network is set up with your waypoints, um, I never had any problems through my playthrough playing the entire year being low on resources for building. It, this part is a complaint. It makes it way too easy. Even if you have the mobs during raids that take out buildings, I had my whole base knocked out. I'm able to rebuild everything before the next one. I may maybe might have a couple less buildings but um, you can just hang around the base and do that again. More combat at a spawn location. You see, it's not too bad here. My health is very low, but 
it's not just you're in combat, you can't get out. You can oftentimes run away, and then as time went on, I got more of the healing salves like I'm using here. But you can block like the stalkers by going like behind a tree or a truck or even a like thorny bush sort of thing. I found myself doing that more and more. Eventually, though, you get way too many, and then you, you have to just run or make decisions of, well, am I going to go in? Am I going to take all these out and get a little bonus? Or, or am I going to avoid it completely because I keep dying and that I'm wasting time over and over again? It's more the time you're wasting. It's not like, well, if you die, then, then you can just respawn, no problem. That, like that sort of thing. The ether resistant, though. This is a good addition that I didn't have when I reviewed the sandbox mode. It makes it much more difficult that if you get it, if you um, are on some of these islands and you get more of these as the game goes on and you don't have the wards, you get kind of stuck in there. So the difficulty ramps up and it works well with uh, the type of difficulty that Drake Hollow uses where it's the mobs surrounding you. They're not like all that bright and, and you, you can block or take some out like apart from the, the wolves. But like when this happens, then you're also managing your resources more, not just your healing selves, your your ether wards, kind of taking them all out at once, the ones that have that uh, that cloud of ether around them. So, like, that's um, a good addition. Exploration, though, like, with the, the base game last year, th th this has always been good. It, it's the kind of the fun surprise of finding out where the trucks are. Sometimes you get lucky where you can just connect a bunch and go around and then decide if you want to explore the island at that time or, or just kind of push on and try to connect the trucks all the way up until the last island. At this point in the game though, I'm checking out my map and deciding how to approach um, awakening the rest of the drakes. There's a bunch that are together. So I'm thinking about like, okay, I want to do it at the end of the season. So then it's less taxing on like the village economy that I have. But then having having those drakes also set up here, I, you see how I got a single. You also, you also get a lot more clothing in the, the Iron Man mode, in, in the sandbox mode as you go from season to season. So that's another kind of reward, but it also highlights that that's more the push like once you get all of them uh, it gets harder technically but it also gets less rewarding when you're doing the same seasons again like the second like or even especially the third year i think you'd be done at that point here i have my two cauldrons though really managing my resources carefully i'm trying to avoid putting down the seed planters and then using up my seeds, kind of stockpiling that and keeping an eye on like my food. Food food I found very difficult to manage in the, the first couple of seasons because it takes so long to get those lobster pens. And you have that middle period where they eat, they consume so many of the resources that um, you're, you're gonna constantly be low in food up until you, you get to that point and that also that also kind of a that also affects your defenses so the resources i found um, i had to manage the most early on whereas later in the game uh, i could max them out and then i could even had some room for defenses throwing some of that stuff in the one of the other new kind of mob mob bosses is uh, at one of the spawn points is this tentacle thing that swings at you. And this is a good addition too. I didn't have this in the, in the game last year either. It makes it a little bit more difficult. Again, the AI isn't that great. It's, it's pretty easy to dodge. But with all of those, you're kind of using the weed spray to, to knock them out. Here, I'm, I'm being careful upgrading the drakes, especially the ones that I'm using because I don't, um, I, I'm first upgrading the ones that, I, um, like with my buff, my sprint, and then I move on to the other ones. But here I'm going to level two with my budget increase. This, is, this was probably not a good good idea <laughs> early on at the time that I did it, because I, I'm suffering for resources uh, the first like two, three seasons, uh, up until the end of the fall, th then it turns a corner when I start to retire uh, some of the drakes. But in one player especially, deciding where, 
what you're going to do with uh, your network. Um, some of the islands are, I mean, you have a lot that are close by, but if you just kind of run around in a circle, um, some of them don't have the supply trucks, and then you're going you're gonna to kind of go back. So I did a, a combination. I would I'd try to go out as far as I could on one side, and here again, the resource management, uh, then, then there I got down. Like th that's a difference too. Like you could, uh, before you could just sit on top of a supply truck and they, they couldn't take you out. But now with the ether thing and then also the swinging, like they'll attack you even when you're sitting up there. So it's not like, uh, like with zombie games where you can just sit on top of a truck and then they just, they just, they just don't bother you. Another cheesy kind of way, what you can do is you can move your body. I wish they didn't have this either. Again, with Iron Man mode, this is okay because your teammate is vulnerable trying to move you around. This is really the, the uh, definitive way to play it though, is with, with some other people. The revive thing is taken out and then just kind of on your honor, if you all die, then like, okay, th that's the end of the game. Let's try again. That, that's the closest you're going to get to making this a true survival experience. But even so, playing by yourself, it's still rewarding because of the procedural generation, the fact that you're building everything and... The, but the procedural generation that affects all elements of the game. You're doing some stuff the same way, like you're going to want to be careful with your resources, but you don't know the drakes you're going to get, you're going to pick those up, you don't know the islands, where those are, where the resources that you need, to, like the juice boxes so your water stays high, that sort of thing. The shop is another part that is a bit too easy that takes away the survival aspect. It's more expensive to use, but um, you're still getting all kinds of resources, even with uh, scarcity, to buy like the blunderbuss ammo that you that you want, or the the weed spray, or anything else that you that you might need. Sometimes seeds to kind of get yourself through. But it, it is it does still at least um, make it more expensive. Where there there is the trader Drake that you that you can use. Exploring the islands, uh, I found that uh, as the game went on to be more interesting than the combat. It's more the enemies within the island and how, how you navigate around and areas that you, yeah, you decide to avoid or even retreat w with your waypoints. More, more about the environment overall than it was about, oh, okay, oh, here's this, this epic combat uh, circumstance. Those do come up here and there, um, especially if you're playing with uh, more people where you can engage in combat and, and get into it, but it it doesn't happen by itself normally. Like you'll you'll have an instance where you take out a lot of enemies, and then the island is relatively clear, and you just pick them off, sort of one by one. Um, it's it's more the the surprise though. You're not going to have it where oh oh that was smart he did this uh, except with the wolf if um, if you're not paying attention. Like sometimes that will happen because he changes his behavior if he's like shooting, laying mines, or or respawning some guys, that kind of thing. It's usually with the with the environment, like when, when that pops up. And then later in the game, this becomes an issue where they're, they're just bullet sponges basically, and they can take way too much damage. A lot of outfits. I tried to make a point to change it whenever a new like item of clothing came up. It I kind of I like the choice that they went with with this game. It's more casual clothes. You have the hoodies or the sweatpants or the the beanies, the more young adult, <laughs> even like teenager type of clothes. But for some reason, with the color palette they use. And like even with the shoes too, it, it makes it more interesting than if it was more uh, more like formal type of of clothing. I can see why like that's sort of a thing if you're playing this game because it, it does have that uh, that chill element where um, you're going, it, you're exploring and, and seeing what what comes up. Like that's the surprise, but then at the same time things are evolving where you drop your waypoints, your base the outfits that you wear, your weapons aesthetically that you'll you'll use. A bit farther into spring, I got my 
walls up, my wooden ones, and they're gradually getting um, a little bit more difficult. I haven't found, like you can see in the bottom left, you can get the, the stronger weapons. There's another combat ability where you can hold it down and then like attack in a group. Um, I didn't, I didn't have as many in the the first world, but then as it went on, like th those would consistently pop up, where it was less of an issue. Here I'm jumping up again in my camp. Also, you know, suffering of not having those lobster pens, so I'm using the tub planter that gives me more more food for like the same amount of seeds, but then I gotta use like the utility water. It's really though only the food. That was the main resource in my playthrough, I think, that I struggled with the most compared to anything else, just because of it takes so long to get those lobster pens. One more raid here. This time they got in a bit. And here's an example of they, they, they can take out some of the stuff or, or the walls, but here are the gnats. These these were really annoying early on because you gotta, you got to go out and swing at them. And often with the timing, when you're attacking them, they, they shoot you while you're attacking them. So shooting them doesn't always work. You got to be really close and then yeah, and then swinging around. But here, here I'm knocking out some of the, the damage buildings. But you get most of the resources back. So it's I was never ne anywhere near a point of, oh, I'm running out of the scrap metal or the cement block thing or the, the circuitry where I have to build this one. It gives you way too much back. I wish that was a modifier in the sandbox mode. The fences, you know, not an issue either. These, I don't bother uh, repairing early, early on. The wooden ones, I just, just plop them down and they, they build them, you know, so quickly. If you have more than enough drakes to rebuild your base because it's so small early on and you have less buildings and then once you get to later in the game, you're going to have, uh, have more of those drakes. So, like, that's never an issue to rebuild your base even if it gets taken out. Here I'm nearing the end. I got most of the supply trucks from the the spring biome. And one mistake I did was not get enough of those scrolls that I should have, which made it a little bit harder to upgrade some of them later. But it's not till the like end of fall, winter, that this is more of an issue. And I have enough sigils. And to avoid a raid, what I'm doing is I can just jump to the next biome and then the raid counter will start. So here I'm jumping on to summer. And the only difference is, again, there's no characters like in the story mode. So you just anticlimactically plop down <laughs> into the, the summer biome. And then like you have the same kind of thing with everyone. You have the toilets that you're smashing to get the, the resources and then the... The lighthouse I found close to every one of the biomes. I could always see it from my starting island where I could check things out. But since I'm in Iron Man mode, except for you die, you lose the die, uh, part. You, When I go to the top and then do the gaze thing, there aren't any more drakes. So I'm stuck with those six drakes up until I retire one. And then after that, then you get... Too. So this might seem like it makes the game a lot more difficult because you have less of that flexibility, but you can you are still upgrading the drakes, and then that is upgrading your your base, and it also forces you though to not get too many, I suppose, so you don't have those issues. But if you get a lot of the the like crappier ones that you're not going to use, like woodcutter or like maybe the resource manage most of the resource ones too like if you're playing single player you're not going to be using then it can be a bit more difficult maybe to get through it but i mean in the grand scheme the the biggest difference is when you're upgrading is getting that extra long health bar that's going to carry you further but the cycle continues you're doing the same thing um, the difference being i got all the i got the most of the waypoints that i need now here I, here I picked up more clothing <clears throat> that I can drop those down. I can explore much more quickly. Um, but now I'm starting to get a bit more into the defenses. I got into the lobster pens now, I'm able to upgrade my base so I can start to manage the, the food better. But here I made the mistake of over upgrading a little bit. And you can see it's all in the red, my entertainment and everything. And, and the only defense that I have right now 
is the the bunker where they blow horns out of that that hurt them and then i'm sticking with the yoga balls for entertainment that's all i got right now uh, with the uh, because all the resources like he, this was the most was in the summer that I don't have the windmills yet. That makes it quite a bit easier. I got the treadmills that I have to manage, but if what, when they're sleeping, then they're not running them. So you're, you're dealing with uh, power issues in summer too. This was maybe the hardest was uh, early on in the summer to get through because the, diff the uh, difficulty ramped up a little bit when I jumped in like my weapons weren't too good but like at this point now you can see in the bottom left I, I got the blue so I'm a little bit a little bit stronger I'm able able to deal with them and then the, the base though I'm thinking a lot more on I want to guide them in through the fence in order to get to the next area but as as it went on I completed some of the islands I got more of the sigils and then the trucks connecting that that became like less of an issue because I, I have like a, more than enough resources even at this point I'm just doing it more so to travel to each island, go back, pick up resources than I am to uh, to get the res to get uh, the supply trucks. But there, I'm dropping some puppets, get a little boost extra in my entertainment. In the main game, at this point, it sort of the opposite. It gets a lot easier. I mean, unless you're playing Iron Man mode, I suppose, where the you have a lot more of those drakes to work with. And you're not micromanaging all the resources. Along with not having enough resources, I gotta connect all the power lines. I gotta connect the the piping, and learn how all this, this stuff works. Uh, you know, difference being with the campaign is I can run through it, <clears throat> and you, you get those little bonuses where you're not dealing with as many raids, or the resources you get like through the campaign. It makes it a a little bit easier. Um, entertainment I was also having a, a little bit of an issue with I ran out but the food I ran out which was a, a huge problem because there's it's harder to generate uh, what you need because I need like with a tub planter I need the water for other things now at this point not just just water by itself and, th and then that that taps my my water usage but you're using the different bumps that you have there's a, a proper way to go through it but for most people uh, if you've just played like the campaign and you haven't like micromanaged everything because it hasn't been that hard, <clears throat> it's a it's, it's a good way to play it is uh, through the sandbox mode with the group, trying to get as far as you can with the, with the max difficulty options, because then uh, th this is a rewarding part. Like I, I found is like those first few seasons, kind of learning how the game works, and um, it 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 means more with the defenses that you build, you think about spacing them out, kind of where they go, or upgrading the drakes that I'm doing here right now. Like here I'm thinking, taking my time, whether <laughs> I want to upgrade them or not. But I decide not to. I just I just get his buff. And these matter more also too. Even the fire one, which isn't that big of a deal, you're, you're going more for damage. Uh, since I don't have the other buffs, I'm going to use that for that little extra damage that I'm going to deal. Surprised I had less issue with water during the summer because it takes quite a bit more of that. I think what happened to me is I overdid the amount of water that I needed and then it became less of an issue. Here's an example of the rewarding part of connecting those waypoints, like trying to get it just where you get it just close enough that you can connect one or the other. Here with my defenses, I tried something else, tried to put another one of those bunkers next to the other one and kind of create a pathway and even like throw in the decoy too. This is actually my daughter's idea. And, and this is the fun part playing with other people is there's items I never used and you can look at, look them up and see what they do. Like I, I found out that you use the decoy, but um, some of them organically people are going to be checking out and you might think it's useless, but then they use it for something. Uh, you're using a lot more of the, the curios, they're called, to to get through. And some of them are good, like the decoy I never used. And then um, just to get them to go to one location, like that worked out well. In the long term, though, this didn't work out. Uh, one smart thing with the AI with the raids is they don't just go to the open area. They also just randomly attack the sides 
of your defenses and they'll, they can just go through, cut through a wall. So this forces you to put all your defenses in a ring around and then also think about how big your base is if you want to have it be like massive then it's harder to defend so you want to gradually make it uh, bigger over time but dealing with all those connections of okay I gotta drop cabbage I gotta drop seeds here I gotta have water connected to it I can't use too much the water pump like how much does that go for each each of the coolers but then I also need it for the, the hot tub and I need it for the 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 crabs too or the lobsters the lobsters at the the same time and I don't yet have solar panels but like, like these help a lot they, they give me more power I don't have to use the treadmill but with all of the the extra structures that you have it gets here, here's an example he's just kind of taking out a side of the wall here but with all the extra structures then some things don't get there right away so it would really help to have that second person but it, it can be fun to just do it yourself and then just deal with it and kind of work with, with, with what's best. Here I'm upgrading one of the drakes to get that bump in my camp level. And this guy I just upgraded purely for the camp level. I'm not using the buff, this is the curio. This is, you know, again, another one of the, the useless ones. But at this point, things start to get a bit easier with uh, the camp budget. You don't want to be upgrading all the drakes to the same point. Some levels are more efficient than others. All of this stuff you can look up. I looked up some of it, like through Wikias. I, I don't recommend doing that though. I think, I think the best is to just play it and roll with it. <laughs> to you know give as much challenge as you can. And that's, that's part of it is, oh, oh, I upgraded and it's too much. Like I, I liked that part more when I, when I would upgrade and then, oh, I don't have enough resources. And then I was using things like uh, going back to get berry bushes and or at night even to get the mushrooms at certain places. They would spawn more than others. You know, really using that procedural generation that makes each game that you play more unique. Here I've gone to fall, though, after upgrading again. I'm mashing those toilets. So even with the procedural generation, some of the stuff is going to be more boring. The shards too, these always pop up by the magpies shop over there. Uh, but the base building is, is always fun though. Like throughout my whole run, um, besides the exploration, that's the other huge component to it is the base building I always found rewarding because uh, certain things would get damaged, but even um, most of the time though, I'm deconstructing it myself getting the resources back and then reorganizing okay where am i going to to put stuff if you're you know more anal about it you maybe know what to do or or you have you put your power one spot or you put your pump one spot maybe early on you have this this overarching plan but for most people jumping into this you're going to be putting buildings down trying to keep it a little tight for defenses and then uh, knocking them down to get the more efficient upgraded version of it so you, you can get more resources overall. Or there might be one where it, does, it, it takes less resources. Like I have the swings here just because I don't want to use as much power. It's easy to, to put down. I don't have time to think about it either. There might be a better way to go about it. And uh, also the uh, building back to exploration too, like with the buildings, um, there are some of the same ones, but like you have the like museum one that had like the, the, the highway that, that that's high up. Uh, but they're all different, at least in the first season, that you're going to have a different one of these go up, or like the factory, or, or the, the house kind of sitting up. Uh, and this, this was also improved. I didn't find that even if it is kind of the same one, the location of it and how much resources there are, it uh, still makes it like more, uh, more interesting or even like in, not intriguing <laughs> where the where the house was and even if that was in a location like where the supply truck was i gotta kind of see where that is doing some guessing there by the fall the raids are starting to get a bit more difficult where the wooden fences really aren't cutting it anymore and like a bunch can get in and you have uh, stuff bunched together like my water coolers that like they start to take out a lot i thought this would be more of the deciding factor on like ending 
like a run maybe they take everything out you can't rebuild but it often just kind of organically became part of it they take out some buildings and i put it in a more efficient spot that takes up less less space than i had before uh the sigils sometimes they that was a question too of do you need to get all the resources and and, they, and you don't at all like you, you don't have an issue of really running out of resources this is going to be like years probably in when you go through all the seasons over and over again that it becomes more of a problem uh that it's that's just more of a time factor kind of a thing and the bump in difficulty uh, really doesn't go up like you have the bump when you start the season like from uh, spring it's established it, it, like it will kind of go up a little bit but then like from summer as the seasons go on there's less of that you, you adjust to the new bump there might be uh, like a group of enemies like the terminers start to pop up later in the the summer or the fall but then the number of them is consistent and then also their behavior how they attack and how they uh, spawn enemies like that changes which, which is a good thing it, it would get to be too easy if they hung back for instance uh, later on they'll still uh, teleport and knock out a bunch of buildings so there is some potential later in the game that you have the difficulty it, it um it just isn't rewarding because it's the the bullet sponge kind of thing rather than it being the ai is smarter where they work together or or even if there's like a large amount of them that they weren't bullet spongy i think that would be uh better too like the numbers do increase but then you still have like that's more the factor than the than the numbers that you're going to be fighting it gets easier though with the the waypoints like here i had in fall even more than I had um, before. One of my drakes finally died. I tested this out. I didn't have enough resources. I ran out of food. Uh, another negative though for the survival is it just goes to Z's and you can resurrect him. And the bad part about this is he doesn't even regress to infant like the first level. He was still at the same level. So this kind of became a plus and it, but it means you can ignore your resources entirely even if you lose your drakes you can just go back and pick up the ones you want to make it more manageable so this was a this is a big mistake this is something that they should change um, your drake should die i think and you can't revive him or at the very least he goes back to being an infant but i think it should be uh your drake should die though and you lose that bump in your level even like like if the level would go back to the previous one i don't know why they had uh this part in but this this is one of the biggest reasons why it's not really a survival roguelite type of a thing i can just pick up that drake when it is convenient and um, it also does help not to just to leave him a while because then i don't have to deal with uh the extra resources but here i get my first my first retired one and then I, I start to get a couple and when you get to this point in the game then you want to be sure to pick up all of those drakes before you go to the the next season so really by here here we are at, at late fall and um it gets to that easy point from here on out because i have that wiggle room now to pick up the the drakes they don't take too much in resources i can kind of upgrade them when I want my camp to level up, but then at the same time, those same drakes still don't take too many of those resources. And this is due to the, the part of the function that makes the game quite a bit easier is when you have a retired drake, you can't get those big amount of charms from him for resources, but that's not that big of a deal. And you still get the bump in experience and the buff and to your camp level where you're, where you're able to build. So like this is the first one that I'm retiring. I, I retire a bunch more throughout my playthrough and then I get a, an even larger bump and then my base starts to shift to much more to defenses. And the, it's easy to get these drakes also. They don't appear randomly, which isn't that big of a deal, I guess. But uh, they're all in the, the same spot. I can pick them up quick. And upgrading is easy because I have all of these collected shards, gems, whatever, from my entire playthrough that I can, I can basically just jump over, get all my, get all my shards, and then um, upgrade them to what I want. The, the shards, I found 
pretty easy to pick up. They give you the ones that you need when you complete something, you know, s sort of difficult, like take out um, a bunch of enemies in an area, or take out a thorn bush or a spawn point. Sometimes those will randomly pop up. But you have a ton of resources at this point, and it never gets to a point of you're using them or you're choosing to just to get by. There was no issue for me to switch from here. I'm switching to stone fences now. Um, I never had, I never ran out of my stone stone fences and you don't have to even really repair them. Like they can knock them out and then you can swing and then you get most of those resources back. There's just, um, even though you don't get uh, much for resources in terms of the consumables or like juice boxes, those kind of things, you do get a ton in terms of the supply trucks. So uh, rebuilding your fortifications has never been an issue. Here I'm going back to the this like Drake field that I have with all these retired Drakes <laughs> that I'm able to upgrade one and another. Here I kept doing this. I shouldn't be. I'm uh, re uh, reviving my guy um, during a raid. Here they're taking out quite a bit more. There's a Terminer and he'll do these sequences where he spawns some enemies. If you've been attacking him for a bit, you got to take those out and then you go back to him. But they start doing the behavior of, he has, they don't do this just yet. Uh, later on he'll do it. He'll teleport into your base a little bit and then your defenses will take him out. But here I have my Tesla cannons uh, up and getting quite a bit easier. The only thing I'm waiting on is, um, the big thing I'm waiting on is the solar panels. Because I made the mistake of not getting enough of those schematics, those scrolls early on so I'm still inefficiently relying on that and much more dealing with uh, the space being closed. I, I use the sun call what this does is if I want to be building since they took out like some of my buildings in, in the last raid um, their sleep level is restored and then they boom can jump back in and then start rebuilding right away. But here you can just see all of the resources I have, all of the, the shards, and you can sell some of them. Like you will eventually get them back. Uh, one thing that I'm constantly selling is my weapons that I pick up, like the weaker ones, the, the orange you eventually get, and then even like the purple ones you're going to be, be selling. And this is, this is where difficulty does go up because it doesn't go above the orange. So like when I went back to spring year two, I had that problem of, uh, well, I'm still weaker and there's no way to go up, so i got to rely on the Drake. So that, that's an okay addition. It at least um, bumps up the difficulty a bit. Here again, another raid, and he's doing that same sequence. So they're not increasing in difficulty, though. Like I, I always had the same number of Terminers that would come up, and then it always went up by at least one in, in the next season. And, and then like as you go further on, you're going to have more of them, and then the behavior is going to change too. Here's a, another raid. The dog's more of a pain, but um, at this point, like you're you're past that point. Here he here he teleports in. It starts to change a bit. But just the um, uh, number of defenses that I have and ballista cannons even too, which don't require any uh, energy. I, I can mix with my Tesla cannons or towers, whatever they're called. That makes it quite a bit easier. On to winter. The difficulty here was just that they really started to become bullet spongy. When when I'm attacking, the thorn bush is not too difficult to take out. Like a few hits, I would uh, I was used to the rhythm of I'll have a few of my strong weapons, my melee, and then also my ranged attacks. And uh, the resource is also starting to become a little bit less, but it's too late. The trucks themselves are are still again there like in the other biome. So that didn't become much of a problem. The first raid always, like with the, the prior ones, you gotta ad uh, you adjust to, like there might be a difference. You know, find out the number of terminers basically, or the number of enemies. Like that will be a problem, but this one was the least. So it's starting to decrease in difficulty. Here I'm playing with my daughter, checking it out. Uh, makes it quite a bit easier. If you have that second person there, they can attack one side of the base while you are off doing something else. Like I still found myself uh, defending, like we're defending at the same time, but it uh, makes it easier. You can all go to one side, take things out. Here, here the terminator takes out quite a, you know, a decent amount of my defenses. He does that teleport thing that I mentioned earlier. And there's a few of them even too, 
that you're you're getting around. One thing um, I didn't do that you're supposed to is put your waypoints around your base, or at least put a couple, so you can like efficiently kind of go back and forth without too much trouble. But the ranged weapons at this point, I have quite a bit of ammo. It's just how well I manage, and I'm always having it on me. That's more the factor than, than running out, because I, I have just uh, so much stuff to sell. I got my solar panels, as you can see here. That uh, makes it quite a bit easier, but this guy got in deep into my base. I had issues. So, it looks worse. More stuff is getting taken out, but um, it's very quick to rebuild, because now I have more drakes on top of it. Like, they're upgraded. But then um, whenever you retire a Drake, you get two new ones each time. And I've retired a couple, so I, I got those those few extra. So I'm, I'm never, it doesn't, never takes too long to upgrade everything. Here I'm dropping my weapons. I'm, I'm, I'm in back in that rhythm, and it's quite a bit easier. And the main last thing I needed to get was the pumpkin patch. The advantage of this is you can plop it down without needing power or water utility and you get the food. So this really freed up uh, a lot of my resources where I can have even more defenses. And since I have more drakes, I can build more ballistas, have more of those cannons, and then I just have so many of the buffs at this point. And this is what you're gonna be using though in the, the later game when you're getting into the second year is those buffs you wanna manage. If you're doing, if you're um, going into combat especially, you want all of those combat buffs for when you're exploring and like the, the the sprinting one too. I didn't have any issue with the cold though. Like I played the main campaign, so you just drop the heaters down, and then your your base is clear with that. And um, if you're looking to play survival, you're you're, you're more, most likely familiar. I do the usual stuff with the retired drakes. Just kind of put them at, in a wall, or uh, or in the center of the base. My daughter like like to do that. Since you're less worried about your resources at this point. It's very easy to just drop down stuff, move stuff around. And the the utility that you need also does change too because you have the solar panels for power and then the water you're using is the towers, which is the same as the coolers. You just need the, the utility water pump that connected to it. But what simplifies it really is those pumpkin patches that you can have off all by themselves just to keep things organized, to keep things neat. And then the entertainment, you have those hot tubs. So you have those two things, your entertainment and your water, the water being the main one that you're putting together. But the power for resources uh, shifts to just the hot tubs and the water pumps to power the, the water towers. But but uh, directly related, it's really just the, the hot tubs, and then as stuff gets destroyed, you're kind of putting those in, in, a, in a place that makes sense, so it's kind of connected to the other one. But here I get, I'm getting the first achievement kind of costume, the bronze that you get in the the winter when you get to the, the winter biome, and then, you, and then you keep getting a costume after this, one after another. And then I got the last thing, so I'm ready to go back to the year two of the spring biome here and and it looks pretty cool like that's the the main pull is i think for most once you get all of the the costumes that might be just about it but the, uh, the experience though is really fun of just going through everything managing all of your resources but it really took a turn to defenses when i got to the the winter biome because and that only was that it, for others it might even happen earlier. Because if you get enough schematics, you you have enough for your camp for your upgrade. You have enough space to build the buildings. It's just uh, for me it was the schematics that I had that I had to push it a little bit later. So at this point, all I'm doing is upgrading drakes and then um, rebuilding everything. One thing that did happen is uh, I used the raid bait for the heck of it, and there was a ton of. The, of enemies that just wiped out most of my base and this is a good test but it, it wasn't an issue i was able to rebuild everything quite quickly you know you, you don't lose any of the drakes and you don't you can't die in the game so um that was the ultimate test and that wasn't any problem i was able to rebuild everything and i was ready for the next raid so here we are back to spring now year two i played the first couple of raids and then concluded who is this game for in its current capacity trying to be a survival game so since you don't have the difficulty 
that ramps up or the consequences most importantly of you die and then that's it or you die and there's some penalty your drakes can't really die your base stuff gets knocked down you can just rebuild it it's not going to be for this group it really is for someone that wants the challenge of dealing with all of these elements in real time at the same time you got to manage your base you got to knock down buildings and upgrade you have to pay attention to all of the items it does force you at least to be doing all of those things otherwise you, you can't really progress forward and then you have those surprises when you're exploring or the next raid how tough it's, it's going to be but even for that group it's it's going to end when you get all of the costumes and then you realize it's just the artificial difficulty of the enemies ramping up if you like this video please give a like disliked it give it a dislike really like to consider subscribing and i will see you next time